seated. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get right into the message. I thank God for pastor's leadership and Pastor Angie for always encouraging us. Amen. Let us pray. And so, Father, in Acts 16.14, um, it says that you opened Lydia's heart to accept what Paul was teaching. Lydia was a worshiper of God, but you needed to open her heart to receive what Paul was teaching. So in the same way today, open our hearts to respond to your message in Jesus' name, that your faith, our faith, O oh God, will be rewarded in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, Apostle Paul gets an assignment from the Lord to write a letter to seven different churches. Each letter had a specific message, words of encouragement and words of correction. Let's take a look at two churches. The church of Semner, and the message was to the church of Semner that they will suffer persecution. But the Lord wanted to encourage them and said, in your affliction, be faithful because there's a reward and I am with you. For the church in Philadelphia, the message was that, that, the, that God has noticed that they had endured uh, patiently. And because of that, he was going to honor them for their faithfulness and for their patience. And he has opened an open door that no one can shut. So renewal. Renewal Christian Center has been patient. Amen? We have been patient in contending for our audacious prayers. And we are believing for the negative seasons in our lives to change. So the message to the church in Philadelphia fits us well. Because we have been patient. Waiting for God to give us food at the proper time. Psalm 104 verse 27. If you can put that up. Psalm 104 27. And he says, all creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. And that's what we have been doing. But in this patience, at times, the heart gets sick. The heart gets ill. The heart gets afflicted and breaks. Because hope delayed makes the heart sick. Yes, we understand Galatians 6, 9. That let us not be weary in well-doing, right? But sometimes when we wait on God, there's bouts of doubts that rise up in us. And we get weary in well-doing. So today's message is to motivate us and to help us find fresh faith in the word of God. Because your faith will be rewarded. It's mid-year. It's half of the year. It's important to renew and restore our faith. Why? We see this in Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. And the verse says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who do what? Diligently. Those who sincerely seek him. So there's a reward in your faith. There is a reward in your seeking in Jesus name. So when we're weary due to the wait for God, our soul gets overtired. It gets exhausted, worn out because of the disappointments that we face, the hardship, the trouble that comes against us. And that can dampen our faith. That can discourage our spirit. That can even grieve our spirit. Turning off the energy to seek God. Turning off the energy to sincerely seek Him. Because we tend to go uh, through the motions. And 
so again, this message is to motivate our faith. Because as you see in Hebrews 11, 6, faith is rewarded. When we seek, he will reward us. Reward what? He will reward the fruitfulness in our audacious prayers. He will reward the multiplication to impact the world. We will be fruitful and we will multiply because of our faith. So before I get into uh, point one, let's touch on the kingdom of God and the system of God and you'll understand the sermon. And so the kingdom of God is built on laws and law is a system of operation. Uh, it is the correct procedure of doing things. It's a standard of conduct. There is a governmental system in the kingdom of God, which means that there is a system of how God administers power in his kingdom. The power to be fruitful. The power to multiply. So basically, the laws of the kingdom describe how things happen in the kingdom. The kingdom cannot function without laws. And that's why it's important for us to know that. God has established spiritual laws within his kingdom not to control us, but to lead us to the fullness of his plan and purpose for our lives. Let me just give you one law. For example, the name of Jesus brings salvation, no other name. And this is described in Acts 4.12. Not the name of Jesus and the evangelist. Not the name of Jesus and the preacher. Only the name of Jesus. And that's what he says in Acts 4.12. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So th that is one of the laws. Therefore, you're asking, what does this um, have to do with us? Uh, what does this have to do with us being fruitful and multiply? Well, church, there are laws that govern wealth and abundance. Let me repeat that. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance. There are laws that, they, that, that govern us to be fruitful and to multiply. And so the first law that governs wealth and abundance is the law of absolute surrender. The law of absolute su surrender. And we see that in Deuteronomy 8.18. If you can put up Deuteronomy 8.18. So in this verse it says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. So God is the only one who gives you the ability, the power to produce wealth. There will be no other person, not even your efforts, not even your energy in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we should re-energize our faith, understanding that he has given us the power to produce wealth. The ability to be fruitful and to multiply. Amen. And so, how do you know that you have surrendered? And how do you know that uh, the law of absolute surrender is working in your life? You know that this law is working in your life because you surrender to the one who gives you the power to gain wealth. Matthew 5, 8 tell us more, will tell us more. Matthew 5, 8. It says, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. For they will see to be fruitful and to multiply. For, them, for they will see wealth. And here, when he says pure, it means that it's to be committed. It's to be devoted. It's not perfection. So God wants your heart to be yielded to him. To his ways of doing things. Your heart needs to be vetted. You, your heart needs to be vetted by God. Because trust 
comes after wealth. Trust comes after wealth. And so let us see who uh, was one of the kings who was committed to God, who uh, guarded and protected holiness. And that is King Asa. King Asa was a king of Judah. And um, Judah was the southern kingdom. And so Asa's father and grandfather had done evil in God's sight. When King Asa took the throne, he implemented change. And this is how he protected holiness. And this is how he was committed to, uh, to God. So what he did was he removed the male shrine prostitutes. He cut down the Asherah poles, which was a pagan goddess. He even disposed his grandmother from her position as queen mother because of her involvement of the pagan goddess. King Asa commanded his people to follow the Lord. Remember what he did. He disposed his grandmother from her position as king mother. Queen mother, excuse me, queen mother. So God is saying today, what are you willing to dispose? What are you willing to uh, get rid of to protect holiness? Is it pride? Is it arrogance? Because pride and arrogance seeks uh, no dependency of God. Okay? Pride and arrogance seeks no reliance on God. And so he cannot trust you with wealth. He cannot trust you with the blessing. So what are you willing to dispose this morning? Is it an unteachable spirit? Being wise in your own eyes. Being self-centered. Lover of self. Godless chatter. Lover of pleasure. Why does God allow trust to be um, first and then he will distribute or release his wealth? Because he knows what happened to Judas. God is looking for more treasurers. But he, he wants you to be exempt of what happened to Judas. Amen? He wants your heart first. Then wealth comes. Then to be fruitful and multiply will come. Amen? And so that is the first law. The law of absolute surrender. Absolute surrender. The second law is... Let me get to it. The second law that governs wealth and abundance is the giving of tithes. The giving of tithes. So tithing is a law. Tithe is not about money. It's a law. In order to renew your faith, it's beneficial to understand that the giving of tithe increases your life. The giving of tithe will open the, 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 the windows of heaven. So we have been taught that a tithe is a tenth of your portion and that you bring to the Lord. Again, it is not just money. We can see this in Leviticus 2730, the Amplify uh, version. And he says, And all the tithe, tenth part of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. That makes it a law. That it is holy to the Lord. And so tithing was a mechanism uh, to accommodate, to cater to the Levites. The Levites was the priesthood. It was also a mechanism uh, for for it to be a resource uh, for people to build the house of God. And so, the giving of the tithe is called the law of open heaven. Giving of the tithe is called the law of open heaven. And we see this in Malachi 3, 10 through 12. 
Malachi 3, 10 through 12. And so I'm not going to read the verse, but I, I'm going to show you why it's a law of open heaven. There are seven prophetic blessings that follow the tither. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tither, according to scripture. This first verse, Malachi 3.10, there's two prophetic blessings. The first prophetic blessing is, God will open windows of heaven, as you can see that. The second one, that he will pour out a blessing and, not, and you will not have room enough to receive it. We can go to the next verse, 11. There are three blessings in this verse. As a tither, he will rebuke the devourer. As a tither, he will not destroy the fruit of the ground. He will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you plant. You plant your business. Your, uh, the ground is your family, uh, the, your projects your personal endeavors. It's really your life. The um, fifth benefit is neither shall your vine fail to bear fruit. So you will always get a harvest as you sow. Lack will not be permitted. Verse 12. There's two blessings in this verse. Verse 12. All nations shall call you blessed. You shall be a delightful land and you will be um, a, 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 a land of delight. That's another version. So you can see that, the, there's, that tithing is a law. It's called the law of open heaven. So that should refresh your faith. Knowing that as you tithe, tithe with understanding. Tithe knowing that it's the law of open heaven. And there is seven prophetic blessings on it. And that God will open the windows of heaven in your life. Don't just tithe out of compulsion. Don't just tithe out of um, a duty. Because when you do that, it becomes an offering. It becomes a donation. So God moves by understanding. Amen? Amen. The third law that governs wealth, and this is a tool that you can use in addition to prayer to encourage your faith. It's the law of giving. It's the law of giving or seed time harvest. The law of seed time and harvest. And we see this in Genesis 8.22. Genesis 8.22. And he says, as long as the earth endures, another version will say, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So, as long as you're living on earth, so plant because there's a harvest. Amen? And so, as we um, learned that the economic system of the kingdom runs by principles, by laws. So seed time and harvest is a law. You cannot reap what you haven't sown. You cannot reap what you haven't sown. So seed does not only mean money. As I said before, money is just the easiest form of exchange and that's why it's just talked about a lot or requested. So because I heard somebody sewing, uh, 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 I think, four or five tubes of yam. They were um, uh, farming yam and they did not have money and they were looking for a divine intervention. And so uh, a pastor encouraged her to take five tubes of yam and go to the nearest church in her community, go to the pastor's office and uh, sow that seed for divine in, 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 in a divine breakthrough. Amen? Amen. So, a seed is, a spe is specific to its harvest. If you want 
a harvest of kindness, then you plant a seed of kindness. So you are kind to people. You'll get that back. When you sow honor as a seed, the harvest is called access. If you sow honor, the harvest of that is access. A seed of good understanding for a harvest called favor. Diligence is a seed. And the harvest is your lifting and your rising. A question is a seed. And that's why you hear people say, there's no silly question, right? A question is a seed for a harvest called an answer. You will gain understanding for, for, from that answer. Knowledge and wisdoms, knowledge and wisdom are seeds for a harvest called insight, revelation. Okay? Prayer is a seed for a harvest called breakthrough. So, in this mid-year, in this six months, um, yes, you have realized I have prayed. There's another tool God is giving you today. Sow a seed. Sow a seed for your audacious prayer. Go before God and meet with him and tell him that, um, tell him about your audacious prayer and say that I want to sow a seed because I have understood that it is a law of divine invitation. Uh, why can I say that word? Divine intervention. <laughs> um, seed time and harvest is yields divine intervention. So let me talk about uh, seed faith. Seed faith uh, was a teaching and a phrase coined by Oral Roberts. Uh, and that is rooted um, on seed time and harvest. So he taught that seed faith is when you connect your faith through a seed for a desired uh, harvest or expectation. Okay, based on the principle of resurrection. And that is John 12, 24. If we can see John 12, 24. And he says, a grain of wheat must fall into the ground and die <clears throat> to make many seeds. So, a seed is a sacrifice. And it must fall on the ground. Okay? And you get new seeds, you get more seed. So whatever sacrifice uh, that you sow, uh, you know, and connect it with your faith, God will honor that. <clears throat> especially in this season of inflation, especially in this season where uh, there's uh, increased prices on items. And we, you know, there's a, a fr now we're trying to be frugal about things. He, whatever seed that you sow, even in this season, will be honored. So seed faith is a way to activate divine intervention. Connecting your faith with a seed as a sacrifice to change a negative season in your life. The seed that is in your hand can create a favorable outcome or desire. So again, sow a seed for the audacious prayer. Amen? And we see this in um, the story of prophet Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Let's look at her story and see how prophet Elijah instructed her, instructed her to sow a seed uh, for divine intervention. So the, Israel, the Israelites had rejected God. Hard hearts brought hard times <laughs> all the time in the children of Israel. So this was a pattern for them. And so the Lord withheld rain from Israel. So there was a drought. During the drought, God instructed Elijah to go to Zarephath. At Zarephath, he was told a widow would prov provide for him. When he met her, he told her, to get some water uh, for him to drink and make him a little bread of cake. The widow was in great need and she told Elijah, 
that she had only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. After I make this for my son, she said, we will eat it and die because this will be our last meal. The widow had no hope but to die of starvation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Elijah responds in 1 Kings 17, 13 through 14. This is where Elijah instructs the widow to engage in seed faith or seed time and harvest. So, verse 13. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you have said. But make me still, <laughs> make me a little bread uh, for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. That's verse 14. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So, here you can see that the widow needed divine intervention. And the only way she could get a breakthrough is to sow a seed, to sow a sacrifice. So, when things are against you in your life and you desire a favorable outcome, sow a seed with understanding, knowing that seed time and harvest will activate divine intervention. Sow a seed for your audacious prayer for divine intervention. You can sow shame and reap joy. You can use your seed to kill a negative season of your life. So, renewal. How do you sow with understanding? Number one, you meet with God. Speak to him about your situation. Tell him that you have prayed. Tell him how long have your, you been waiting for. Tell him what is in your heart. And let him know that according to the seed time and harvest that you want to sow a seed. Two, give the seed the inst an, inst an instruction. Speak to the seed. Speak to the seed the word of God. For example, at the beginning of this year, I was prompted to sow a seed. To sow a seed for our theme, be fruitful and to multiply. So, I was thinking this is 2023, so what seed should I sow? And so I came, um, I settled with $20.23. And so I sowed $20.23 and I spoke Genesis 128 on that seed. Amen? This morning I sowed three seeds. And I used the same amount, $20.23. So I sowed a seed for our children. And I spoke the word Proverbs 11.21. If you can put Proverbs 11.21 on that seed. And part of that verse, it says, The offspring of the righteous will be delivered. Delivered from harm. Our children will be de delivered from harm. Our children will be delivered from addictions. Our children will be delivered from anything that does not align with the word of God. Another seed that I sown was 1 Chronicles 4.12, the Jabez prayer. So I sowed that into the Shupius family. <laughs> Amen? That his hand will always be with us and enlarge our territory. So that's how you can sow a seed in your, in your situation. So... The seed in your hand again can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years. If there is stagnation, delay in your life, a seed can open the heavens for a harvest of movement. There are many ways to sow a seed like I, I mentioned. <clears throat> 
So, renewal. Sow a seed. Amen. That's another fo- a tool that uh, the Lord is giving you today. In addition to prayer. Amen. Okay. So, let me wrap up and uh, I want to give five I want to define what wealth is. I want to define what wealth is. Because I I believe that's uh, wealth as well. To be fruitful and multiply is wealth. So wealth has five levels of prosperity. Five levels of prosperity. So if we're moving in this theme, we got to know what wealth is. We got to know the laws of the kingdom that governs wealth and abundance. Amen? Amen. Okay, so prosperity. Prosperity, if you take it to its simplest form, it is uh, to do well. It means just to do well, to prosper. Okay, it describes when someone is advancing and making progress or excelling in their lives. So that's prosperity. So there is five levels of prosperity in wealth. The first level is spiritual prosperity. Spiritual prosperity is when you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You are engaging with the Holy Spirit. You are engaging in the Word of God. Um, It's not perfection, but you're in pursuit of what God is all about. Amen? You have a drive towards God. Uh, Your prayer life is healthy. Amen? That is spiritual prosperity. Uh, You're moving with God. Second um, level of prosperity in wealth is mental prosperity. Mental prosperity is when um, you you, you desire to function um, in the mind of Christ. Because we have the mind of Christ. So you desire to function with the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ involves wisdom of God to distinguish what is right and wrong okay this is how you know you have mental prosperity you have wisdom the wisdom of God to distinguish what's right and wrong Uh, if you struggle with double mindedness or unbelief uh, when you seek God when you seek God's mind he will reveal and lead you to truth so you, 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 his mind is working in your life, giving you discernment. Number three is health and vitality prosperity. And this is found in 3 John 1, 2. That you are enjoying good health. That you are enjoying um, uh, good health. Because I was like, wait a minute God, you know, sometimes there's pain. Sometimes there's a cold. Sometimes there's illness. What does that mean? So when you're enjoying good health is when you're drawing strength and energy from God. That's how you enjoy good health. And um, that you have the energy to contribute to uh, the things of God. You appreciate wellness. You're practicing healthy habits. And you are honoring the body that God has given you. Financial prosperity. Again, wealth is not only finances so number four is financial prosperity under wealth you have resources to solve problems and meet needs and have a system that replenishes the resources that you have that is financial prosperity the last one is relational prosperity it's under wealth again Don't let the enemy deceive you that you are supposed to do life alone. You're not supposed to do life by yourself. Yet you don't forsake the gathering of the brethren. So God has given you a strategic relationship within your life uh, for you to have the opportunity to express love and care and connection. So that you can live a meaningful and productive life. The first relationship is your relationship with Jesus. The second is relationship with family. And the third is relationship with useful people. Useful people. Amen? Amen. 
Okay, so church, uh, this was God's uh, message to you. He just wants to make sure that you're moving uh, with him in faith. Okay, so in order to re-energize your faith, continue to be patient, knowing that the law of absolute surrender shows trust in God and wealth comes after trust. Refresh your faith and continue to be patient, knowing as you give your tithe, that is the law of open heaven. That blessings will overtake you and he will rebuke the devourer in your life. Know that um, to restore your faith, continue to be patient and know that the law of seed time and harvest along with prayer yields divine in intervention. So, so with understanding in Jesus name. Amen. Your faith will be rewarded.